Hey everyone, I am back and we are going to be doing 13 Halloween DIYs. Now these could be considered a little spooky, maybe a tad odd. We're going to be using some skeletons, some doll parts, and some cute little ghosts. I am all prepared for this video. I've got my little Timu skeleton seed bead earrings on. I love these things, you all. I hope you guys are ready for a jam-packed video. I also wanna give a shout out to one of my viewers. I was in my antique booth and I met a lady from South Carolina and she said, I recognize you. And I was like, hi. Her name is Sherry Taylor. Sherry, it was so nice to meet you and to know that you are one of my viewers. I do have two antique booths. One is in Hudson, North Carolina, and the other one is in Hickory, North Carolina. The one in Hudson is at the Antique Corner, and the one in Hickory is at Hickory Antique Mall. I have started carrying the DIY paint line, so if you all are in those antique malls, check out my booth. Let's get on into this video. Project number one is going to be a upcycle from a Dollar General bottle. Now, I bought this bottle and it had a label on it from Dollar General that was Halloween, but I didn't like it and I wanted to put my own label on it. So, what we're going to be using here is from Roy Cycled Master Label Board papers, decoupage papers. Now, you can get these at Aunt B's Attic. Don't forget, she has $9 flat rate shipping. All websites and links will be in the description box below. There are plenty of free Halloween labels online that you can print yourself, so you can use any label for any of these bottles. The first thing I did was cut out the label and paint the back of it white. If you want a very bright label, go ahead and paint the back of them white if they are from decoupage paper. If you want more of an antique look that you can see through, don't put paint on them. Now I just added some Mod Podge laid it on there, smoothed it out, and added another coat of Mod Podge on top, making sure to seal all the edges and wiping away the excess Mod Podge because I don't really want to cover the bottle in Mod Podge. You all, I love this green bottle. It is gorgeous. I love the shape. I do add some ink around the bottle and some gold rub and buff. You will see that in the photos. Now you all will have to let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section below. This next project is project two and three. These are together. You all may not be into using doll parts for decor, but I thought that we would upcycle some like we do our mannequin heads. I have a box of different doll parts and some of them don't have the right legs or the right arms. So we're gonna use these as sort of like busts and we're gonna cover them and add uh, some little toppers to them. So I just pulled out some of my decoupage paper. Both of these are from Zazzle. Again, I will have the link in the description box below. I have part of one and a full piece of another. We're just gonna me um, mesh these two together to cover both of these. Uh, doll busts is what we're calling them. Because these bodies are, busts, sorry, are such an odd shape, they are gonna have plenty of wrinkles on them. Don't stress too much about it. Listen. These are going to be like vintage items when they're finished. So we're just going to put the Mod Podge on there and we're going to lay the paper over it, doing the best we can to smooth it out and get it in the crevices and not stress too much about the wrinkles. Same way we do the mannequin heads. Then we're going to put a nice layer of Mod Podge over the whole, all of the areas to seal this in and let them dry thoroughly. Now what I do with the paper is I just go ahead and mesh it down in the little holes where the arms and legs were to go ahead and cover those up. Both my busts are thoroughly dried and where I ripped my paper I have some white spots or places so I'm just taking this dark wax or black wax. You can use um, watered down paint for this if you don't have any wax to go ahead and cover all these and have those areas blend in more. The wax I'm using is DIY Debbie's Design Diary Black Wax. Now that I have these busts, uh, the colors, the way that I want with the paper, I was trying to find something to go on the tops of these to kind of give them that little piece at the top that makes them look like a true bust. And I'm not sure what the name of that is. I'm just calling it a topper, stopper, I don't know. But um, these little wood rounds came off of the bottoms of some legs that we put on a table. 
that was too long and I saved them. They're uneven, but they turn out looking so great. So you guys, save your scraps. I'm telling you, it's just something that you will end up using later. All right, so what I'm using here is just some of the quick and thick tight bond glue. Again, I will have this stuff linked in the description box below. Uh, I do have Amazon links. I do get a small percentage if you go through those links. Um, it helps pay for items on my videos. All right, so I'm gonna use the this and then some hot glue. And even though there's a very small rim on here, this works perfect, you all. Once it dried, it is not going anywhere. I decided to paint these uh, Waverly Black Chalk Paint because we're gonna use some rub and buff on them. You know, I gotta pull the rub and buff out. So we're just gonna give these a good coat of the Folk Art Rich Black Chalk Paint. Once this dries, I decided I wanted to put a little knob on the top to just finish these pieces off. So I found these knobs that I had picked up at a thrift store. They had a whole bunch of them priced out really cheap. I think they were like a quarter a piece. And uh, I'm just gonna use glue on these and I'm not painting these. I love the color of this wood. I love the um, striations in the wood. So we're gonna do the same process. We're using that quick and thick with some hot glue in the center, press down and they dry perfectly and stay in place so good. Apparently, I've lost all of my rub and buff footage, but I do take my rub and buff gold around the edges of this black and on the top, and it gives it a beautiful look. So, you'll see in the photo coming up and a sneak peek at the next project. Let me know what do you think about these busts. And look at this crate. I knew I had to have something to put my busts in because. They don't have legs or a bottom, and I really just wanted to sit them around. So I had this little crate that had um, like a black stain on it, and I've gotten a few of the new IOD pro products, and this pumpkin mold I had to have, and I knew it would be perfect for this crate to throw in a little bit of fallish into my Halloween, because I wanted to put a pumpkin in the crate with the doll busts. So we're just gonna use some of the Amazing casting resin. It sets up in like five minutes to do this pumpkin and I didn't pour a ton So my pumpkin's very thin, but it's okay. It turned out fine My leaves are very thick because I did fill them up. You will see a little bit on the crate, but it does turn out It turns out okay. Um, I should have put some more uh, of the Resin into my pumpkin to fill it up even more, but I didn't so oh well once I got these set up, I just pop them out and use that same tight bond, quick and thick, to glue them to the crate. I don't think I used hot glue. I, it wasn't necessary. This quick and thick's so sticky, it grabbed on really, really quick. Now, I got this mold from Aunt B's Attic, as you all know. I don't carry IOD products. I do carry recycled papers and the DIY paint in my booths only. But I love Ambie's Attic for this type of product. You will always get your money back out of molds. This is why I love molds. You can put them on anything. You can use them over and over again. So don't hesitate to invest in these molds um, or any molds for that matter. All right, so I am just painting two coats of this acrylic apple barrel paint in the color chestnut. I love this color. It reminds me of a deep terracotta, but a deep pumpkin. It can be, it's such a versatile color, you all. So I'm just painting two coats of this and I'm painting it on the whole thing because I want some of this color to show through when we finish this up. Next, I'm gonna use three of my fusion paints in the color Oakum the color park bench and the color conservatory. I know I use a lot of different paints, products, and brands. I am not a one shop stop girl, okay? I'm never gonna be, I love all kinds of different paints. I love them based on, of course, their quality, but also the colors. And if they seal, have a sealer, if they don't have a sealer, so if you ask me why I use a lot of different colors or brands, that's because I'm an eclectic person when it comes to products, when it comes to my style, and I just 
will never be a one paint person. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I've had some questions about that. So I go to my shelf and my drawers where my paints are. I look at the colors and I grab what I like, whether it's Fusion, DIY, Apple Barrel, Waverly, uh, Folk Art. Uh, I will tell you, I love the Waverly chalk paints. I love the Folk Art chalk paints and their irregular acrylic paints. They are some of my favorite brands when it comes to the more reasonable paints. I love the DIY line. I do love the Fusion line. Their cost per ounce is great for the, the product, you all. It's the product that you're getting. These may be more expensive in these very large jars, but they go such a long way. Aunt B's Attic does carry these Fusion paints. All right, so what we are doing here is Adding the lighter color of green, which is the conservatory, while it's still wet, blending in some of the park bench and some of that oakum color, just to get the leaves the color I want. Now I'm going to use a baby wipe or a paper towel or and a paper towel and wipe some of this back. And when I do, that orangey color comes through. So that's why I just painted it all in the orange. And then we're going to use the oakum on the stem with a little bit of those greens, but not much. And there's a little tiny piece of twine or vine, not twine, vine coming down on the pumpkin. And we're going to color that in as well. Now that I have those colors the way that I want them, I'm going to take a little bit of the um, orange back in through and just touch up where I got a little bit too much green on my pumpkin or in other places that I just didn't want it. Do not be afraid to color outside the lines. You can always paint fixes anything. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to clean up where all of that is on my crate. And I'm going to go ahead and give the face of this a color or a coat of the Fusion in Coal Black just to tie this off. Once all of this dries, since that Apple Barrel paint needs a sealer, well, it doesn't necessarily need a, needs a sealer, but it is a little bit matte. So I'm going to go ahead and go over all of this with just a really thin coat of the DIY Big Top to seal everything in. So let me know what do y'all think of this one and how these little doll busts just fit so cute down in there when that crate with that little pumpkin. All right, project number five. We are going to be using a bottle. This bottle is such a unique shape and it's very thick and has almost a little green tint to it. And I thought this would be perfect for this large entomology bug. Um, I think it's a beetle. So I grabbed some of this... Um, Harlequin type paper. I'm not sure this might be from Roy Cycled. Uh, if not, it's from some Zazzle paper that I got. But I do have some napkins like this I'm going to be using in a project coming up. I found those on Amazon. I just love this uh, print, but this one's very aged. So I'm just tearing this to fit my bottle uh, in a haphazard way that will go behind my insect. Once I get the shape the way that I want it and get everything cut down, I'm going to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on the bottle, put my paper on top of the Mod Podge, let that dry thoroughly. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it has to be overnight, but it definitely needs to dry uh, because you don't want these, um, these transfers cannot stick well to something that's not dried very, very thoroughly and set up. Now I don't have the video where I transferred the insect onto the bottle, but I did seal it up with the Mod Podge and add a little bit of Rub and Buff Gold as well as some black ink around it or that gray stone ink. And here is the photo of this one. The next project you may have already seen if you watched my Timu haul video. If not, that's why I went ahead and threw it in with this one. Number six is going to be a super easy upcycle. We are taking this gorgeous 
textured, old-looking Victorian type frame, even though it's not. It's from the 90s, probably. And we're going to go ahead and take out the original artwork in it. Now, this, this is a sealed back. Don't hesitate to buy those backs that are sealed on, on art because just cut through them. Use the paper to replace back. We're going to use reuse everything. All right, so we're going to pop out that old artwork, and we're going to add a beautiful art print from Timu. I am just pushing those little staples up because we're going to push them, push them back down once we get our artwork in there and replace the backing to finish off this in the back. All right, so I ordered some beautiful pieces from Timu. They come on this. Uh, they're rolled up, but it is a canvas print, you all. So we are just going to cut this down to size with the backing that came out of this frame and then replace it back in the frame. And that is it of placing this in. Now, when I replace the back part, I do go ahead and just use that piece I cut out and use some hot glue to replace it. Originally, I was thinking about using the frame as is but it did have a little bit of a bronzy look a little bit much for me and i wanted it to be more of a matte black with some gold so i'm going to be using my fusion in cold black to give two good coats to this and then go back in with some rub and buff over those beautiful designs now i think this paint and gold rub and buff gave this a beautiful gothic halloween look let me know in the comments below, do you like the painted version over the original frame? Our next project, number seven, we're over halfway there, you all, is a rolling pin. Now, I did a few of these upcycles with stamps and paint and transfers, and I wasn't sure they were going to sell in my booth, but they eventually did, and now I don't have any left, so I thought we would do a Halloween version or just a little bit of a Gothic version. We're going to be using this folk art. I think it's an Adirondack white, possibly. But anyways, it's one of the whites from folk art. Very bright. And I'm just painting two coats on here. I'm going to let that dry. Then go back and paint the handles that black, rich black by folk art as well. Once everything dries, I'm going to be using some of my Tim Holtz stamps. And this is, uh, they are by Stampers Anonymous, but they're Tim Holtz design. They are called Anatomy Chart. I'll try to link those below. I'll see if Amazon has a link for them. I'm just going to sporadically put these on. I'm going to be using my Fusion in Coal Black paint. This paint's very thin. The Fusion line is. You don't have to seal it. And as I get this on my stamp i'm using a fan brush and just kind of swiping it sideways making sure not to get it down in those crevices because it just makes a mess of your stamp and i'm just kind of rolling it on uh, from the top to the bottom making sure i don't move my stamp and then um, once i get my design all over the way that i want it i will you know seal this even though the fusion paint doesn't need sealed uh, I'm showing you how I'm cleaning my stamps. I just spray them immediately with water and then wipe that paint right off. And I do that every single time so there's no chance for it to dry on those stamps. Once I get the stamps on this one side the way that I want them, I am going to use my heat tool and dry them so that when I roll it over, it will not smear what I've already stamped in case they were not dry enough. Once I get all the stamps on the large part of the rolling pin, I'm going to go ahead and take that black paint and just kind of go around the edges, giving it a little bit of a distressed look with the, with the paint. Then I'm going to give this a seal with some of my clear polycrylic. And then I decide that I want to add some of the Fusion 
antiquing glaze. So I grab that and pull that out. When I get finished with that though, that stuff is very shiny and I just didn't care for the shine. I love the antiquing. Uh, you can't, I don't show it in this video, but once it dries, like I said, it is very shiny. So I go back over it with my matte Rust-Oleum clear coat to tone it down and it doesn't, that matte just will tone down any really shiny. So what do y'all think of this one? We are back to project eight and nine. So these are going to be two together for this next project. I bought this set of houses for $3 and come to find out it was actually two packs. I think these came from Target maybe. I don't know. But they were an awesome deal. They're very thick wood. So we're going to turn these into little ghost houses. Now, when I first started these, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I wanted to have a couple houses, um, spooky houses, in this uh, upcycle. So I grabbed these out and I bought these at a Goodwill. You can see they put a thousand stickers on the boxes. Our Goodwills do that around here. And what we're going to do is paint these black to start with. And I just chose a couple different sizes out of here. I chose to use the uh, folk art chalk paint in rich black and I'm going to give these two good coats of that. Actually I think I only have to give them one. With this paint it's so thick you don't really have to do more than one coat. But we're going to do that and let that dry. And then I decided that I wanted to put some ghosts on these houses. Well, I don't have any ghosts and I was trying to think what I had that I could make ghosts out of that was wood and I have these little tags. They're made out of, I think that balsa wood, like the Dollar Tree planks are made out of. They're really easy to cut into. So I grabbed two different sizes and just took a pen and drew like a curve at the top of them, got my scissors and decided to just cut away. Once I got them cut down to the kind of the shape that I wanted, I went ahead and grabbed my little finger sander to sand around the edges and get them more of a smooth shape than what they were from the scissors. Now we're just going to use that folk art and white chalk paint and give these a good coat to make them look like ghosts. I wanted to put some eyes on these, so I thought I would use the Sharpie marker. So I grabbed out one of my Sharpie markers it did not work well. So then I thought I'm going to go ahead and use my Fusion Cold Black Paint because like I said, it has a little bit of a sealer in it and um, just goes on very smooth. So I thought it'd be great for such a small job. I normally would use a black Posca pen paint marker, but one of my sons borrowed it and never brought it back, my small one. And the other one I have is very large. So like I said, the Fusion Cold Black worked perfect. We are going to attach these to our little houses with some hot glue and some of that Tight Bond Triple Thick glue. Now I thought these houses need to look a little spookier than what they were, so I grabbed my Barnwood Gray. It's like a gray color of um, liquid patina from DIY Debbie's Design Diary and a little chip brush and just brushed over this to add that gray on to make it look a little spooky and I went over my ghosts as well. Now I did rub some wipe some of this back because you know it was quite thick. I didn't want that much on there. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about these little spooky ghost houses. On to project 10. Now this one was a little bit out of sight of the box. I have thrifted two of these pots and I really wasn't sure if I was going to upcycle them or just use them for maybe camping or I don't know. But they are in great shape and I thought we would use this as a Halloween project. I paid $3 for this. I know our Goodwills are just outrageous. But anyways, it's cheaper than if I would have bought one in the store. So I got the stickers off there and then I'm giving this a good coat of the Waverly Oh, I'm sorry, the Folk Art chalk paint in the white again. I went ahead and painted part of the handle too, just to make it kind of cohesive with the back of the pot that I already painted. Now, remember those napkins I said I got from Amazon? Well, here they are, and we're going to use one of these. I love the Harlequin pattern. We're going to age this up a little bit, and we're going to put a now stamp on it. Now that I've separated it, so down to one layer of napkin, because you don't want more than one layer, I'm just tearing this to see 
how I want it to go on the back of my pan. I don't want it to cover the whole circle. I want it to have a torn look in some areas. And then I'm gonna, just gonna use a uh, Mod Podge to attach this just like anything else when decoupaging. And then I'm gonna put a coat of Mod Podge on the top as well. Now that this is dried, well, I'm gonna go in and take my sander and just sand off that excess. Like I said, I didn't want the whole thing covered, but I wanted it to have part of it covered. And the top is like a torn edge. You'll see once we get the Because I wanna put finished. a stamp on here, I'm gonna go back over some of this with this white chalk paint. I'm just using my stamp to determine how much of a white background that I need because I'm gonna be using this Tim Holtz stamp Again, um, I've had these in my stash because I am a, a junk journaler and somewhat of a paper crafter in your junk journaling world, maybe. I'm not really a scrapbooker, but anyways, I have a lot of this type of stuff and I wanna use them. I think it's great to use them for this kind of stuff. And uh, again, I'll try to have this linked below. Now that I've dried that with my heat gun, I am just gonna use the same process that we did before when we were stamping doing the sideways kind of brushing to keep that paint from going down in the crevices of my stamp, and then just stamping it on. Once I get this stamped on and dried, I will go back over it and seal it with that Mod Podge. Then I decided I wanted to do the same thing as I did to the um, rolling pin and use that antiquing glaze from Fusion. I did that, it was very shiny, so I went back over it with that matte Rust-Oleum clear coat to tone that shine down. I love this color. I just don't know why they made it such a high gloss shine. I'm sure there's a reason probably for furniture, but the color is gorgeous. So I'm, I just tone it back if I want to with a matte sealer, even though this is a sealer itself. Now you all will have to let me know in the comment section below if this is something you would do to the back of a pan for decor purposes. Project number 11. Oh my gosh, you all, I love this one. So, you know, I love cloches. I found this eyeball, actually I bought two of them at Dollar General for $3. I have seen that there are eyeballs at Dollar Tree, but none that I've been in. Now I'm going to be using this cloche or light fixture. I don't know what it was, but I've had it in my stash. And uh, this wood base that I popped off of a tray I painted it that chalk paint in black. Now I'm gonna add some little legs to this because um, glue, I have found even some really good wood glues don't hold these on the greatest. I'm gonna use screws and put in the legs. I'm just using a little mini drill for this and I wanted to show you all a couple of them, uh, do them on camera. Now I've got all four of them on the uh, little wood base. Actually, this is an MDF base. It was on a three-tier thing I got. Um, it came from Target, but it actually came from like a, a uh, closeout store, and it was very wonky, so I just popped off the little um, trays off of it to use in other projects. I'm just touching that, ba that base up, and then I sealed the whole thing with some of that um, polycrylic. Now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do to attach this ball and I just decided to use my triple thick tight bond glue around the rim of this and I put some on the eyeball as well. I left this set overnight and you all it's not going anywhere. It is so sturdy so uh, you know this this one you can use on multiple things not just wood and it is definitely holding up to that. Now on to project 12 and you're getting a sneak peek of it inside of that cloche. This next project is one of these tiny little skeletons. This one is from Dollar General. I do have a pack from Dollar Tree, but I just love the patina and the color of this one. However, they missed out and missed the mark on the head. So I'm taking a Sharpie and trying to age this up and give this little face some definition. And since I added some of the black to the face, I went ahead and added some more around different parts of the body or skeleton. 
Once I get my little skeleton the color that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and add some wings to him or her and some feathers. You all, I saw something similar on Pinterest. They were trying to make what looked like skeleton fairies. I'm not really calling this a skeleton fairy, but it turns out really adorable. So I have these black feathers in my stash and they actually look like they're made for earrings or jewelry. They have little metal hoops or loops on the very end. Um, but we're going to use them on this little guy and I'm using some of this black sparkly tool. You can get stuff like this at um, Hobby Lobby and if you do it, you look every other week, they have this and their ribbon half off or 40% off now. And I have these little acetate wings that came from some Tim Holtz um, acetate wing packs. Uh, again, I'll try to have that linked in the description box below. So I'm just trying to figure out where and how I'm going to add this. The first thing we're going to do is add these little wings by using my hot glue gun. Hot glue is going to work perfect for this because this stuff is very lightweight. Next, we're going to go ahead and I'm wadding this tool up kind of and tying it in a bow to make it almost like wings as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut some on the ends, fraying those ends because they're just kind of too perfect if you know what I mean. I want this fairy to look a little worn or at least it's wing, some of its wings and um, stuff that I'm adding because you know it is a skeleton. And we're just going to hot glue those on just like we did um, the little acetate wings and I'm just putting them kind of right below and not not quite in the middle of those wings. I'm going to hold that for a few seconds because the tool does not adhere as quick as like that plastic did. Now it's time for the feathers. So we're just going to do similar the same thing. We're going to put them kind of to the bottom below both sets of wings. I don't want them super tall. They actually could have been shorter once I put the cloche on top of this little guy. Um, the, the feathers definitely could have been shorter. I just love the way this little skeleton turned out. You all will have to let me know in the comments section below. There are so many things you can do with these to make them just look adorable or use them for Halloween or everyday decor. Now we are going to add a little setting for this guy to be attached to inside of the cloche. We're going to use this little mushroom. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, I went ahead and went around with some rub and buff on this little cloche base. So both of these are from the Dollar Tree. A little pumpkin, it's got the clip on it, and then a set of mushrooms. Now I want to be able to sit them in there and sit my little guy on them. What I'm going to do is hot glue them together and then hot glue the mushroom itself to the base so that they'll stay in place. And it'll just be a temporary hold in case I want to, you know, use my heat gun to heat them back up and remove them and put something else inside of this cloche. So right now I'm just deciding between this, what I call mummy cloth. Um, it, this was in my Timu haul. This stuff is amazing. And between moss, and I actually end up going with the moss just because I thought it looked a lot more natural with the pumpkin and the mushroom. So we're just going to hot glue some of the moss in the little cracks and areas of the mushroom and the pumpkin on both sides. Once we get that done, then we're going to take our little uh, skeleton and we're going to sit him kind of on top and just try out our cloche on top of all three pieces to kind of see how it's going to fit and if I need to make any adjust adjustments to um, the mushroom and the pumpkin. Because everything is going to fit how I like, um, which to be honest, he doesn't end up really sitting down. He ends up being more leaned against the mushroom. But I just take some hot glue to the back side of him and glue him to the top part of that mushroom so that he is almost in a sitting position. But he ends up being more in like a stiff um, leaning position if you see in the photos. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this one with the photo coming back up that you have seen before. Okay, now on to project number 13. I have been loving using the Recycled Label Master Board. So we are going to use this one. It is a turpentine label and we're going to use it on this little short fat bottle that I've had in my stash that I thrifted. 
This one I wanted to look really aged, so I didn't paint the back of it white. I wanted it to be more of a um, duller color, so I just went ahead and put the Mod Podge on the back of the label, put it on the jar, and then of course put the Mod Podge back on top of the label, making sure to seal all those edges, and then wiping the excess Mod Podge off of the, the bottle, because I don't want Mod Podge on my bottle. I wanted to add a little twist to this bottle. So I have these plastic um, skeleton hands. To be honest, I'm not sure where I got these. Um, I've had them since last year and I thought they would look great kind of holding the bottle, but they were really stiff and I knew that I could use, since they were plastic, that I could kind of mold them if I heated them up with my heat gun and then maneuvered them a little bit with my hands and that's what I did and you guys they went on so well um, I think I did cut off those little teeny um, there's like little clips on them like they could actually insert inside of something like I said I'm not sure where I got these but once I got them maneuvered the way I wanted them or molded the way I wanted them then I was able to use my type on quick and thick to um, glue them on with some hot glue. Then I used painter's tape or masking tape to hold them in place while they dried overnight and they are on there. So now my hands are dried and my bottle is ready to add some mummy cloth to. I thought that I would kind of disguise the back of the hands with this, plus give this bottle a little bit of a creepier look. So I'm just going to cut off some and start with it. I can, you can end up trimming more off if you need to. I thought it was cool just to drape it over the whole bottle and then put it kind of where I want it. That way there would be some over the hands over the back and a little bit hanging over the front now i'm just using my hot glue for this that's all that's necessary uh, to hold this in place now i hope you enjoyed this video and i just want to say thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video